aggressive fighter. He was running the whole fight. The whole fight, yeah. He's not like one of those like traditional Mexicans though. He's like, yeah, he's like, bro. He was boxing, man. He was like boxing, that was yeah. that was that was different. Yeah. It was a bigger fighter and a taller fighter with the long reach and you run it. He reminded me of somebody. Was on on Gonzalez's side. Exactly. A lot, of, a lot of Nicaraguans. I'm surprised. I didn't know LA had so many Nicaraguans. Yeah. Unless they flew them all out here. Half the, half the country is out here. Nah, man. <laughs> Yo, the reason Triple G is selling tickets in LA is because of Roman Gonzalez. I was at the, the right. Dominic Wade versus Triple G fight. And Roman Gonzalez got a, a bigger ovation than Triple G. Really? At that fight. Oh, it's yeah. funny because um, when you watch, like, I know the numbers like this, but when you watch the fights on TV, Los Angeles got a population of uh, 55,000 people. When the last time you heard of a white boy the same amount of venue anywhere? Yeah. Anywhere. I mean, keep it real. It never happened. It's because Roman Gonzalez. And then Triple G come out there with a, a, a Mexican cape. Mm -hmm. And I fight Mexican style. <laughs> and and I, I got a sombrero on my head. And I got a Mexican trainer. And a Mexican rapper. Yeah. And then I got a Mexican <laughs> fighter. You know what I'm saying? That I'm helping. You know what I'm saying? That's helping me sell the tickets. Mm -hmm. That's why he's selling tickets, man. And then, you know, like the, the boxing fans come out here to see Roman Gonzalez. But then Triple G is there. And then he scored a knockout. Yeah, Even yeah. if it's a bum. And then he gets all the credit. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just because it's the main event. Yeah, because that's how he did it. I man. never got the impression that like, yeah, yeah. You see how jam packed that motherfucker was? For Roman Gonzalez, six thousand, six thousand, seven thousand. Yeah. I think it had to be more than that, man. I mean, e even if it was just that, it felt like twenty five thousand. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've never felt that before. There wasn't that many seats empty either, bro. It wasn't. After yeah, when it, once Roman packed, was ready to man. fight, it was packed. Travis, you've been to fights here. What, what does that make on uh, atmosphere wise? All the fights you've been to here. Fuck, man. That's pretty good. It's up there, man. It's pretty good. It's pretty I good. I went to Bradley Vargas. I went to Leo Santa Cruz versus Abner Mars. I went to Berto versus Ortiz too. Triple G versus Dominic Wade. That shit has got to be up there at the top, man. If not top with, tied with another one. Like... Yo, the Leo Santa Cruz versus Abner Mars fight was tight. You went to that one? Yeah, I was there. Cool. But he was that's at a the, good at one. The Staples Center. Staples. That shit was live as a motherfucker. And what it was that? a lot of people, most people was going for Leo Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. But some people was going for Abner Mars, man. And some, a lot of people felt like Abner Mars was going to win that fight because he had a better resume. He Even started out Leo good. Santa Cruz was undefeated. I think but I did too. He started out good though. Yeah, he, he did. did first, but then after a while. First he played 85 punches. I think that was the highest output. Output of his career in any round, and then he gets gassed. He let mm. he let Leo, Leo Santa Cruz walk him down, but yeah. then fucking Leo Santa Cruz got beat by Carl Frampton, who's like five foot four. That's not even the same. That's not even the same fight. But still, man. No, but I'm saying is that Frampton. You beat a guy that was expected to beat you, and then you you lose to a guy that you was expected to win. That's exactly what I'm saying. Is that Frampton is a different fight. That's like not even the same. Like, the other dude was a tiger. Uh, yeah. Abner Mars is a tiger, bro. And you know what's fucked up? If Abner Mars exactly. fight uh, Carl Frampton, Abner Mars will win. So? Yeah. He, he'll, he'll, win. He'll, he'll rise to the top. Yeah. Why, why do you do that? <laughs> he's aggressive. He's a bigger fighter. Carl Frampton got some flaws, man. Yeah, he does. He ain't a I was surprised that he pulled that shit off, man. Pretty boy. He's, uh, in, he's the new pretty boy. Who, uh, Frampton. Frampton is a... Don't mind getting down and dirty. You yeah, see what he did? Who was well, that? Um, a Beko or some shit like that? Remember the guy where they said he was hitting a lot of low blows? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he might have landed a lot of uh, cheap shots, but at the same time, it's the pros, man. You do whatever you got to do to win a fight. Just like with uh, Salido, when he fought Lomachenko. Oh, yeah, he was doing whatever it took. He knew, mm -hmm. he knew if, the, if the referee lets you get away with it, then you do he it. And, and, and Lomachenko had an amateur style anyway. Yo, Bernard Hopkins was viewed as a dirty fighter. You remember Bradley back in the day was viewed as a dirty fighter. Remember yeah, he come with in with head? his head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, was viewed as a dirty fighter. It don't matter. If you can get away with it, you do what you got to do to win the fight. And I think, I think uh, Salido will beat him again. I got some money up on that Lomachenko? fight. 
Yeah, I That's think not Salido. a bad bet. You can, you can throw it on. I bet. think Salido. No, no, I'm gonna bet one of my boys though. Oh, okay. At least a hundred dollars. Okay. I'm gonna up that shit. <laughs> Two, three hundred. Yeah, right before the fight starts. So you hey, know yo. what? Yeah, I'm feeling, yeah, I'm feeling real confident. Hell yeah. So you know somebody's betting on they guy. They, they already think that they guy gonna win. Okay, you heard bet, it, man. Bet three hundred. Don't watch this video. Canelo Leo for the next one. That's actually gonna be a good fight, bro. So? That's gonna be a better fight. Mm -hmm. Well, I seen the Triple G versus um Count Kill Brook fight, and that was actually a good fight. A good. far better fight than I thought. He's but, a little tall though, Kell Brook, huh? Kelbrook is 5'9", and Triple G is like 5'10 and a half. But he looked, Probably for some reason, I don't know why, Kel five, looked tall. Five, yeah. He looked tall, bro. But Kel Brook was diesel, though. That's what I'm saying. I mean, damn. And Triple G was looking like sickly and shit the whole time. His face was all sink in and shit. Mm -hmm. he, didn't, his, he didn't have no definition in his arms or nothing. I believe I'm. I'm with that. I don't know how he won that fight, but he he, he mustered away. Kill Brook's corner stopped the fight yeah. early. That, 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 that's like Kill Brook never even hit the floor, man. He, Kel, if, if that's the case, they could have stopped it in the first round mm -hmm. because Kell Brook was hurt. He looked like he was about to go down, but he didn't go down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then Kell Brook came back and won a couple rounds. Let's so, say GGG was like, you know, not as not necessarily his power, but his perceived power. Like, like obviously he's a ball puncher, mm -hmm. but like it's just a fear. Kind of like the Mike Tyson fear factor. Yeah, man. You could tell both fighters was nervous. Yeah. I was watching Triple G, and then when they were singing the national anthem, Triple G had his glove right here. You could see it. You could see he was nervous as shit. He was nervous as shit. I thought Kell Brook was winning that fight before the stop. He should have stayed a little more active. Just kept punching. You know what stopped it? It's because Kell Brook let Triple G throw like 20 or 30 punches. I've seen answer. the rematch right now. I mean, he was trying to tire him out. He was making Triple G miss. But at the same time, you can't let nobody swing at you that many times. They feel like you you, like you defenseless. You know what I'm saying? You letting somebody punch at you that many times. They got to stop. You have the right idea. If I punch at you 30 times yeah. and you don't do nothing, yeah, you might make me miss a few shots. But if I punch at you 30 times and you don't swing back, the referee is going to be looking like, okay, maybe, you know, he's hurt and it might be time to stop the fight. And, we're, and with the fact that he's always used to winning, Kell Brook is always used to winning. He always wins by... But you know what? The referee was still going to let it go on, though. It was Kell Brook's corner that stopped the fight. I See? That... You know what's funny about that fight, too, is like after his great round two, it's like he almost abandons his jab rest of the fight. I'm sitting there saying, Kel Brook? Yeah, Kel Brook being jabbing like he, he, Right, he, right, he did. Rounds, he's committed to that jab. He's, he's sticking right. it and he's sticking it. And, then he and he's watching him. He was, I saw him watching. Right after he has his best round, he's like, you know what? I'm not going to jab no more. I want to just be, I want to try to be Floyd Mayweather. I want to slip a million shots. Yeah, you can't right. do that. You can't do that. Man, he was doing a damn thing, man. I swear. I kind of felt like Kel Brook won those first four rounds. I gave Triple G the third round. I gave Kel Brook the first two. And Triple G kind of came back in the, in the um, matter of fact, I gave Kell Brook the first three because it was stopped in the fifth. And Triple G came back in like the fourth. That's when he really sh like showed him like. It looked like Triple G was desperate though. Triple G was getting tagged, man. His nose was bloody and everything. He Face looked marked up. But even though he won the fight, it still wasn't impressive yeah. because fucking Kell Brook is a welterweight. Yeah. You supposed to blow him out of the water. He is, but that's the worst thing he's had since he's been in America. He's, yeah. He's, he's worst yeah. He's had since he's been in and it was against a world tour. I never so seen him get so hit that you, much. I'm, I'm just telling you. What do you think people going to say if he want to fight Canelo? Canelo, who is really like a junior middleweight. This fight one pound above junior middleweight. But at the same time, he rehydrates to like 175, 180. And you was fighting a welterweight who was outboxing you and landing hard shots. If you if you're Canelo's people promoter, are gonna say, people are gonna say that Canelo is gonna beat Triple G easy. They already saying it. If you were his promoter, what would you what would you if, if I was you, who's Canelo's promoter? What would you make want? Make that fight now. <laughs> make that <laughs> fight next. But the problem is Triple G. This motherfucker say 154 to 168. And then he's like, okay, all right, I'll fight you at 155. He's like, oh, oh, no, 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 160. You're the 160-pound champion. He's like, okay, well, fuck it. 
okay, I come to 160, then he say a 50 50. It's always going to be excused. So I don't even know if that fight could be made. Canelo is not going to give him 50 50 because he don't yeah. deserve it. Excuse me. I think by, the, by this time next year, uh, Yo, to. Triple G is ducking, man. Because there's no way. Dude, you, you was getting outboxed and fucked up by a fucking welterweight. But he has no other choice. He's either got to go up or down because he just fought a welterweight. Okay, what's he going to do, fight uh, Dominic Weed again? No, I think he's going to no. no, fight. No. I think he's going to fight Chris Eubank Jr. That's not a bad fight. He I might, think that's he, a pretty good fight. He might lose that one. I mean, yeah. He, he looks way fight. more active than Kel Brook. He looks Eubank? more active. I don't know, I don't know how uh, Eubank Jr.'s chin is, man. Kel Brook is yeah, taking yeah, those shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Eubank might not be able to take those shots. You know, but I, I kind of think that Eddie Hearn signed a two-fight deal. Because just think. Now, Eddie Hearn could have made the, the Eubank Jr. fight, right? Yeah. Right now. But you do that fight, and then there's no other fights that could be made. But you can sacrifice your welterweight, and then you can come back, and then you can make a fight with Chris Eubank Jr. So you can get money from both of those fights. Yeah, the UK fans would, would they'll be okay with that. Right, right. They'll move along with it. Especially, like Kell Brook looked pretty good against Triple G. So that's, that's gotta give Eubank a lot of confidence. So anybody, any middleweight. Kell Brook is. He's a got a fight coming too, he right? Fight a middleweight who's looking pretty impressive. You know what I'm saying? So I just hope they don't stop the fight early, man, because I feel like Kell Brook is gonna win that fight. And I'm really pissed I'm, off that they stopped that fight like that, man. I've seen I'm, worse. I've I, seen worse in fights. Me too. Oh yeah. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? You seen fights where the fighter was dominating and then they fighter they, they corner stopped the fight. But no no no, I'm saying I've seen worse than what Kel Brook had. Yeah. Like he didn't <laughs> <laughs> You see like a lot of people a lot of people used to think that I was like a coon and I only dissed black fighters, but I was dissing all fighters. Yeah, you were, you were. And I was really pro Triple G. And I've had to like private so many videos that was tri pro Triple G. Because I kind of felt like, yeah, you asked Andre Ward to come to 164, which you did off of 50 50, which Andre Ward didn't deserve. So, you don't deserve 50 50, but you want 50 50 coming to 164. I was defending him. But then he started ducking Canelo. You the ones running around saying 154 to 168. So, and motherfuckers mad at me for saying like, why don't you go to 155? Yeah. With Canelo. It's to his demands, right? No, it's not even his demands. It's Triple G's demands. You the one that's saying 154 to 168. So why the fuck is you saying, oh, Andre Ward gotta come to 164 and Canelo gotta come to 160? When you saying I knock, I not only beat, but I knock anybody out from 154 to 168. That's not a good look for him, honestly. And honestly, I think a lot, a lot of it too. I mean, Triple G plays a role in it, but I think a lot of it's Abel Sanchez as well. Abel Sanchez runs his mouth for yeah. everybody. Yeah, and then like some fanboys be like, well, you can't hold Triple G responsible for what Abel Sanchez say. But at the same time, I just did a video about them being interested in the Kell Brook fight like about six months ago. Okay. When they they was like, Abel Sanchez was like, well. I think that's ballsy. And if Gil Brook want to go up to the middleweight, and, and yeah, yeah, he was saying that. <laughs> so, and then they actually made the fight. Triple G didn't say nothing about that, but the fight got made. The worst thing Abel Sanchez does is when he says, oh, you know, we had my heavyweight inspired. Triple G's putting it on him. He's, he's just not. Did you off. see my last video on Triple G? No, I don't know. About the undersized gloves. Oh, I, I did watch that one, yeah, yeah. He said his gloves are smaller than all, all the other fighters. And, you brought the pictures out and you circled the gloves. Dude. You see, um, this one right here. That video was funny. That video was funny. I remember my friend, he ate Triple G. It's like, he's like, you see Travis Scott, he said? <laughs> no, he doing some shit that he ain't supposed to do. Somebody, some, some people were sending me some pictures, and, uh, some messages about what they did tonight. Wow. They said um, when the gloves came off, Triple G's brother yeah. took the gloves, kind of like trying to hide them or something like that. Wow. You see, because what he do, it's something that Mike Tyson and Manny Pacquiao used to do too. It's like, okay, you got the... But the gloves is already custom made. So it's less cushion around the knuckles. But Triple G and Kovalev do this too. They punch walls. And um, Kovalev even do push-ups with the gloves and shit. So they get the cushion away from the knuckles. 
and I think that um, Kovalev and Triple G kind of like do something with those hand wraps. I think Kovalev learned that from Abel Sanchez. Yeah, man, I don't know. I, I'll tell you this though. But they did get checked properly in the UK, and Kell Brook's face <laughs> did look pretty fucked up, man. So I'll tell you this. You gotta give you gotta give Triple G credit for um for his power. But at the same time, man. There's more he to was, the story. He was, he was getting pieced up. He was. There's no reason for you to be getting your nose bloody and get hit like that from a damn walk away. And you're supposed to be top three, top five. Right. They No, top three. Yeah. Number one is Roman Gonzalez. Number two is like Kovalev. Number three is Triple G. And they got Andre Ward at number four. But default. What's interesting too is like, um, Yo, Brook is not even in the top ten pound for pound. No. I actually, I actually don't worry about Roman brother was telling me like you know that in the locker rooms that uh you know when they wrap uh the hands i guess like for 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 william and there'd be extra security because they, they would make sure his hands are wrapped but for supposed you know they're kind of like, kind of like a side side thing that's what i heard i was where the ring was like cushioned a certain way to where it made it G, i it talked to some of these fighters bro and it's some things that i i can i, I know that i can't say because it's some things that i know that I can't say because these fighters haven't came out publicly. And you know, some of these fighters, they gotta protect themselves because like say, if you come out and say, Triple G generates millions of dollars. Now, say if you say something, say if you say something that will hurt Triple G's image, right? You could get blacklisted. You know what I'm saying? And nobody would ever, HBO don't want nothing to do with you. Showtime either. So, you know, I mean, I can contact these fighters. Some of these fight, fighters are contacting me. But at the same time, if it hasn't been a public statement, if it's just a conversation between me and the fighter, mm -hmm. you know, it's I don't off wanna, the record. I, I can't, I it's can't, off the record. Yeah, I can't put it out there yeah, yeah. because I don't want to get the fighter in trouble, man. They got to protect their career. 100%. Yeah, man. Let me ask you, so, let me ask you this, Travis. Well, my Omega Dolls had a really good performance tonight. Do you think he's going to come up out of your box or other? <laughs> I don't know, man, because like I think he's he's throwing he's look impressive, man. I like his style, and he look impressive with the fighters that he's fighting. It's just I, I'm not familiar with those smaller weight okay. classes. Wait, 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 wait! But you thought he won the fight tonight, right? Definitely. Yeah, okay, you guys. Slide, man. Yeah, I had to we got right, we gotta get that. And he, and he was expected to lose. You going up in weight, That's fighting a bigger good. fighter, and everybody that I talked to was saying the watchers didn't win that fight. It looked like it was close. Yeah, it, I didn't think it was close. I, I didn't think it was 117, 111, though. I thought it was about that. Really? Yeah, I, I thought, was, I thought I it was 16, 112. Okay, so that's the same thing. Same yeah, thing. yeah, I thought, okay. I thought it was dominant, man. I was kind of general. I don't know the bias. Was it more body punches? Was it the body punches or what was it? No, not only the body punches, head punches, combination punches. Everything. Dude. He's the smaller fight. He's like three inches shorter or two or three inches shorter than Quadros. And he's running up on Quadros the whole fight. He's a smaller fighter coming up a weight class. Following him, And beating your ass. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you was expected to be him, you got to give it up to him, man. And you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say he's not the number one pound for pound fighter because I'm not familiar with that weight class. Okay. But at the same time, he beat the shit out of that boy. And, and Quadros is expected to, to dominate him. That's fair because a lot of, a lot of people want, don't want to give credit because they don't know the weight classes. Um, Roland Gonzalez, though. But I did see your video. Which one? Which where you Mike ether? Did. Where you ether, Andre? Uh, no, you Box ether uh, Box and Ego. Oh, yeah, destroyed. <laughs> man, I fucking love that video, man. And you made a lot of good points. You know the thing with Andre Ward, man. He took those two years off, and then he came back. He fought a bomb. No, Sullivan Barrera was a good fighter. He's solid, he's solid. Nah, but, but Paul Smith... He's still a match against Ward. Paul Smith was a tune-up. Let's not call him a bum. Yeah. If you Paul Smith like, was a tune-up. He was a tune-up. Yeah, nah, coming back from that yeah, long layoff. He was a tune-up. But you if gotta you look at like their last five years, you know what I'm saying? Or even their last three years, Andre Ward only fought like three times. And that was like in the past, what, nine, ten months? Yes. Yeah. I can still give him credit for that. I still give him credit for that, though, to fight frequently every three, four months. You got to give it to that's, him. That's tough. Four, sometimes six times a year. I think Roman Gonzalez is number one pound for pound, man. And he's taking chances. You see, I respect the fighter who's willing to take a chance and move up. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you, 
a lot of people feel like he's gonna lose this fight. He still took the fight. And you see, like, man, all that fucking acne on, on, on Kawadra's back. Yeah. <laughs> Did you use on something? Hey. I'm not trying to say he was on something. We're at the forum. But they were saying that about Marquez when he had the acne on his back. Mm -hmm. And Kawhi just had it worse. Yeah. Roman Gonzalez didn't, he didn't bitch about it. He took the fight and he was dominant in the fight. So you got to give it up to him, man. The crazy thing about like Roman is like, he's like shorter than I am. And like nobody can back this guy up. Nobody can back this guy up. I got a question for you though. Ask me. Now. You know that we got the Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev fight coming up. Sergey Kovalev is like number two pound for pound. Andre Ward is number four. If Andre Ward dominates Sergey Kovalev, do you think that he deserves to be number one pound for pound? I, I don't. I don't. You don't think? And he's I'll, I'll tell you why. I think he's, he can be number two, but he can't be number one because the, inact he's still, the inactivity has hurt him. Roman's beat so many guys who were like. How many belts does Roman Gonzalez have right now? Right now, he has. Well, now he has. Technically, he has two. WBC? Kovalev has three. Twice? Yeah, WBC and twice? Andre Ward had like. Um, he still had his WBA title, yeah. and he was the Ring Magazine champion. In fairness, in, in fairness to Gonzalez, though, when he fought Arroyo in Arroyo's last fight, I, I never watched it, but in Arroyo's last fight, he could like him said, he got robbed. And the guy he beat, Mick Williams Royal, he could be the uncrowned IBF champ. So Roman could be a unified champion right now. A lot of people look at him like, as a unified champion. But I think Roman is the best because not only is he fighting like, like good opposition, but he's, he's dominating. There yeah, is no, yeah, that, that, that there's, matters. There's man. no question. Like, like, even, people that, like, even people that he was expecting. Wait, wait, wait. He still got to be like, Inuya. He still got to be Inuya. I think, I think he got to be Inuya. Sure. But like, if you look at the Alexander Grant fight, right? Yes, he won one of dominant. But Alexander Grant is a fan. Uh, Andre Ward should have stopped him. Should have stopped him. If he gets out of that, then I think, okay, he has more of a case. But because he didn't stop him and didn't make that statement against a guy who I, I, I feel like he's making a statement against, and a lot of people feel like he's making a statement against, you can't, you can't do that. If you power for number one, you gotta, you got to dominate against him. Where do you put Ward yo, if, if yo, he decisions? Uh, Ward might dominate Kovalev, though. Where do you put Ward yeah, if, where do you it, put it Ward? It might happen. It might happen. They, they, they call in that fight pound for pound. Where do you put Ward? Where do you put Ward if he decisions Kovalev? If he decisions him, clean, nine, nine clean, three, clean, like clean though. Like Honestly, he, he beats him good, but like decisions. It don't matter, bro. Honestly, it don't matter. I think Manny Pacquiao is number one pound for pound oh, right wow. now. He surprised me with that. That's no, crazy because he likes. No, no, man. No, Floyd is retired. Yeah, he's still retired. But but Manny Pacquiao is still fighting. He's saying technically. And okay. if you look at Manny Pacquiao's overall, overall body of work, yeah. You gotta give it to Manny Pacquiao, man. What, what the fuck is Andre Ward doing that's bigger than what Manny Pacquiao did? Triple G, all of them. Yeah, Triple G, any Kovalev. Yeah. Kovalev won two of his belts from a 50-year-old Bernard Hopkins. Facts. So, you gotta give it to Manny Pacquiao, man. Regardless if you don't like the Jesse Vargas fight, Yeah. Manny Pacquiao is number one pound for pound, man. So but even Ward. if Andre Ward beat Kovalev, that's a, that's a pretty good win. But look at what Manny Pacquiao's been doing for all of these years. You can't just pass him up because he's on his way out. Yeah. Manny Pacquiao is probably and on his way to like his ninth or tenth world title. So even if he win a decisive victory against Kovalev, you still Manny Pacquiao's still number one. Pound so where you got Roman? You gotta have top five at least. Oh, at the least, man. right? Roman's he's doing his thing, bro. Two That's WBC one, titles? No two ups and Two of these guys. Because Roman is doing more than what Manny Pacquiao is doing right, right now. now. Yeah, but That's, a, that's, that's, a, that's the only reason why, yeah, yeah. you know, top five. It really depends on what you value more. Do you value the activity right now, or do you value like the body of work from like, the past? Even if they're not as active right now. Well, if you value the body, body of work from the past, then you would have Andre Ward ahead of Roman yeah, Gonzalez. Yeah. But nobody really has uh, Andre Ward ahead of Roman Gonzalez right now. I think Andre I think Ward isn't even ranked pound for pound on Box Rec. And then on, on the Ring magazine, what? Roman Gonzalez number one and Andre Ward is number four. So I don't know. Either way it go, Manny Pacquiao's number one. I think Roman needs that New Year fight. Yeah, if he gets that fight and he beats him the way he beat Quadra, Go to Japan. Yeah, I think um I think Roman Gonzalez should get the credit that he deserves, man. Because he's taking chances. See, look, a lot of people give Andre Ward credit for moving up a weight class to fight uh, Kovalev, right? But 
Didn't Roman Gonzalez just do the same thing? He did tonight. Yeah. yeah. For, against uh, a guy that people thought that he would lose against, right? For the title. He dominated him. So even if uh, Andre Ward moved up and say if he went 7 to 5, or even 8 to 4. Decisions. Roman Gonzalez still got it, man. You know what I'm saying? Ahead of Andre Ward, but at the same time. Yeah, and he's doing it in front of their one fans. Of those guys bypassing Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah. Number one pound for pound, man. I agree with that. Let me ask this question because um, you've been at Andre Ward at times. Um, what's your take on like guys having to fight on the road? Do you value that? Like guys having to go on the road and fight if they can't leave the backyard? Absolutely, Ward man. Because shit, when you're going on the road, you're taking a chance of getting robbed on the scorecard. So either you gotta stop your opponent or you gotta be extremely dominant. So you gotta give Kovalev credit for fighting on the road. But you know, at the same time, Everything is he, he got him. He got him do that. Everything is He the sold 1,000 tickets to his fight with Najib Muhammad. The only times that Sergey Kovalev made a seven figure payday was against John Pascal in Canada. And then the only time where he sold like a lot of tickets outside of the, uh, the Pascal fight was the Hopkins fight. So, you know, you gotta show a fighter respect for when the fights on the road. That's kind of my. That's kind of like. But at the same time, he was doing that because he needed to to get the money. Yeah, yeah. That's you don't have to. You could fight in Russia and make like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But if you want to make like, well, I don't even know if he'll make that. I don't no, know I don't make. think he'll go over there. I, I don't. I don't know if he'll make. If he was making that much money overseas, he would. He would do it. There's no money over there. Not like here. He dominated his whole purse from the Salimba fight. <laughs> to the family of the guy that he killed. Oh yeah, the uh, Kovalev. Roman 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 Simo, yeah. yeah, I remember and that if fight. If it was like nearly a million dollars, he would have He would have donated all that. But you know, you gotta show a fight of respect that um, that's willing to take the chance and go on a road, man. And he was here today at the forum. He was, here today. he was there at the forum. I seen him on. The, I swear, man. I wish I would have like seen where he was sitting at. I didn't see where he was sitting. I didn't know either. I didn't see him. I seen him on the uh, on the big screen. Me but too. I would have went to a seat. Hey, it's all, Even if it's I would have got an interview, I would have still called him out like, what's up, man? How you feeling about that Andre Ward yeah, fight? Yeah, 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 yeah. You feeling confident? Wait. You know, Sergey Kovalev is kind of acting shit. Yeah, but... Did you hear about what recently happened? No. Sergey Kovalev said that he saw Andre Ward in passing, right? And he walking past, and he tried to speak to Andre Ward like, hi. Andre Ward completely ignored him. And... I guess he got in his feelings about it. Oh yeah, he said fuck him and he this. Said, fuck yeah. him, right? You know, I'm do excuse that I us can for the, the listeners. But he said fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, like we we not friends, we enemies. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We about to fight. Anybody that I've ever had a street fight with, right? Well, we talking about boxing, but at the same time it's still a fight. Anybody that I've ever fought with, we never shook hands. Never you. Me too. And now you all emotional because I didn't shake your hand. Now beat his ass. What if what if what if it's the other way around? What if Sergey decisions Ward? Whoa, I'd be surprised if that happens. No, 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 no. Okay, it could happen. What if he can't Sergei finish him? Literally, the, the only way I see when he you gotta call it like that. Yeah. No, 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 no. Like if Sergey Kovalev won a decision, you you basically saying that Sergey Kovalev is gonna outbox Andre Ward. And he couldn't finish him. He just couldn't put him down. He might not be able to finish him, but that don't mean that he won those rounds. Yeah, yeah. Can you really see Sergey Kovalev winning seven rounds against Andre Ward? I can't. I without can't. like. Without a knockdown. That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. I mean, he's gotten better boxing wise, but the only not chance, to that level. the not only no. chance that he has is to knock uh, Andre Ward out. That's the only chance that he got to win. Yeah. And and Sergey Kovalev's trainer. Is saying that he don't even believe that Sergey Kovalev is gonna score the knockout. He's saying that Andre Ward might try to survive for the 12 rounds. That's why I was asking that question. That's why I asked that question because somebody they sound like it's gonna be a decision somewhere. Yeah, yeah, everybody, everything's to be decision. Because right? this is the, this will be the first time Andre Ward trains for real. The last three guys he could have took it easy. He's gonna train for real now, you know. So what if it just comes down to a decision, you know? Nah. No. If you go to the decision, Andre Ward is going to take it, man. He's going to win. Yeah, exactly. You know, Andre Ward was hurt, man. He was dropped against Darnell Boone, I think. Yep, he was. But Sergey Kovalev was dropped against the same guy. Yeah, Darnell Boone was a tough guy. He was tough guy. Yeah. He was tough guy.
So I think that Sergey Kovalev's only chance at winning is by knockout. Yeah. And his own trainer, and he feel like Sergey Kovalev might not get the knockout. And if he does knock him out, it'll be from a, a, it's gonna be and it's the exact combination. It'll be left hook to the body, straight right hand. It's gonna be that exact combination. He always lands out against his opponent. Well, the Kovalev. Kovalev. Kovalev yeah, the I body, did Bernard Hopkins. Right Yo, mm -hmm. I think um, Andre Ward kind of like he lost his stuff. You know what I'm saying? From taking all of that time off, he don't really look like the same fighter. He lost all his speed. Yeah, he's dominating these guys. He lost a lot of foot speed too. Mm -hmm. What happens I mean, after this though? He's dominating these guys, but at the same time, it just looked like something is, is off. You know what I'm saying? So, but at this, but even even if he beat Sergey Kovalev, I don't know if they give him. They might give him number one pound for pound. They but might. I don't, they I don't, might. I don't, I don't they think could. They yeah. Deserve it though. Well, over Pacquiao, right? or even over Roman Gonzalez. Maybe, maybe Roman. I don't know, man. You know, I don't no, no, dis no, but disrespect the lower weight classes. Yeah. Roman, just because I'm not familiar with them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because Roman's Roman Gonzalez for has titles. done more than yeah. Andre Ward has done. Oh yeah, Andre Ward came back like in the past, what, nine, ten months and had a few fights. But Roman Gonzalez has been dominating consistently. And, and traveling, fighting for that They titles. might. HBO might give him number one pound for pound. HBO will. Yeah. <laughs> if um if Ward for me at least if Ward's me number one pound for pound like cause he just got the light heavyweight Kovalev looks the first like real test for the light heavyweight so like if he beats Kovalev he's definitely number two for me and then after that if he goes at like like Adonis Stevenson Peter Biev I think you're gonna do that shit next you know one Ward? of those type of guys who are, if he beats any combination of those three guys Kovalev Adonis Stevenson or Peter Biev I'll put a pound pound on him Ward yeah I, I think I think he'll beat Adonis easy. As long as he stays with the left hand, yeah, he can beat Adonis, Adonis is a one-handed fighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shit, he got a strong-ass left hand. <laughs> He'll knock anybody out with that left hand, but, you know, Ward is too crafty, man. He's going to take your left arm. You got to have two hands to fight under Ward. I think he'd beat Adonis for each. But I think Adonis would beat Kovalev. It's all the styles. It's all the styles. His styles make fights, man. I would pick Adonis over Kovalev. But really, to keep it real with you, man, I think that cold love just might score that KO. I think so too. Just because um, that's really, I think, the type of basketball fights. Yeah. And it's what's in the fight. 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 So, like, if you watch Gordon switch six, he's hit angles real quick, and then he can tie guys up and make it off those angles. Right. Now he's not necessarily doing that. He's just, you know, jab, he's, jab, punch. He's still making it, like, on skill alone. Yeah, skill. You know what I'm saying? He's up at that lower, that higher weight class. But I think that, you know, his skill is getting him by. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that uh, that layoff killed him. What about Walter Ways, man? About uh, Earl Spence? What do you think about Earl Spence? I think Earl Spence is going to take over, man. But I think he's going to be avoided just like Triple G is avoided at middleweight. You think Kelvin, do you think Kelvin will not duck Earl Spence? That guy's going to have him? He's going to come back to Walter Ways? You're going to wait that one out, huh? No, man. You see how good a shape Kelvin Brook was in for the Triple G fight. Oh, man. I don't, I don't think that, I don't think, yeah, one second. I don't think that he would even be able to make 147, man, because he was draining himself already to make 147. If you look at his face, it was, he always appeared drained. Strong. Making 147. He looks strong tonight. So, getting in that shape for Triple G, y'all saw what happened with, with Roy Jones when he went up to heavyweight and he tried to come back down to light heavyweight. He that won a decision against good. Tarver that he should have lost. Yeah, yeah. And then he fought him again and, and he, he got knocked out. Yeah, he destroyed him. So. You guys want to say a but look, but look. last message to the boxing world? You got to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, let me make this point though real quick. Yeah, yeah. Now, a lot of people, include me, because I'm not really the biggest Kell Brook fan. And I kind of like talk shit about him because he's been cherry picking and ducking fighters. But at the same time. This is like for any of us. If you could fight Errol Spence and make a million dollars, a million dollars is cool, right? What if you could move up two weight classes and make four or five million? Who wouldn't take that shit? I already think that he would lose, he would lose either fight. So why not go and fight Triple G for four or five million instead of fighting Errol Spence for one million? Yeah, they gonna say he ducked him, but at the same time, just think about your life. It's pound for pound too. You find a bigger, you find yeah. a more ranked so, yeah, guy. I would do the same shit, but at the same time, man, the people gonna say that he ducked Daryl Spence by moving up. But at the same time, man, he was beating 
Kell Brook. Um, uh, he was beating Triple G's ass, man. So now he looks better. He looks better than if he would have lost to uh, Earl Spence yeah. on a PBC card. I think, but you know what? <laughs> the way he was looking against Triple G, a lot of people might say that he would beat Errol Spence ass. Yeah, now it gives him an edge. Yeah. yeah. I don't think, so, I think Butcher can't hit him with his work. That's what he said. I think, I think he should do that. He's going to campaign, man? 5'9 five, nine. Five, nine is good for Walter right here. But you got Boo Boo Andrade, he's like 6'2". And then you got the uh, Charlo brothers, like what five yeah, eleven? Yeah, he was a, he's a big welterweight. Maybe it's not a good idea, but I think with the skill. I don't think that he would be able to make one forty seven no more. Yeah, he can. He was already struggling to make one forty seven. But he now, he embraced after, the middleweight. He likes dude, he it. He was bigger than Triple yeah. G. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he'd be able to make one forty seven. I don't but think, I think he wants. El Smith will take over one forty seven. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. But I at mean, the same time, I think that he's gonna be dunked, man. He's gonna have. Last, last message to the boxing world. Travis Gotti, we're here with True School Sports. Oh, man. Yeah, we up in this motherfucker, Los Angeles, the forum. You know what I'm saying? Holding it down. Chocolatito put on a dominant performance. You got to give it up to him. Triple G just had his fight with Kell Brook. It was a tough fight for Triple G, but he pulled it off. And man, I'm looking forward to seeing what's next for Triple G and Kell Brook. Yeah, as, as for me, man, you know, with, with Travis Gotti, you know, the TV, the YTBC, this man, you know, like, he gets a lot of criticism, criticism but he's all right with me. I like Travis Gotti, so. Um, yeah, man, Sean Latito for me, number, he's number one pound for pound. Uh, I think a lot, these guys got to catch up to him. They're playing catch up right now. He's just separated himself from everybody else by moving up and beating that guy who's rated number one in Ring Magazine. Hopefully, you no know, AA fight happens, but yeah, man, it's a, it's a great fight. And, um, yeah, man, it's a great experience here in LA. So, yeah, Travis Gotti, Jimmy Taylor. Roman Gonzalez held it down. He sold tickets without Triple G being on the car. It was a packed house. Y'all saying six, seven thousand, but I seen way more than that. It felt like twenty-five thousand. And it was like split. 000, split right the in the middle. Crowd going wild. <laughs> so, respect. I'm looking forward to seeing what Chagatito do next, man. But he proved tonight that he's clearly number one pound for pound. So you got to give it up to him, man. All right. So you already know, guys. True School Sports. Travis Gotti here, representing an LA forum. Yeah. Holding it down.